In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about Excel. Excel is a very powerful engineering tool. It is a spreadsheet, um, but it's, it can perform a myriad of different operations depending on how you want to use it. And it is very versatile. It is, it is not just for, um, uh, calculations. It, it can be used for a wide variety of, of different uh, different purposes and because of that it is uh, probably the most widely used piece of engineering software in the world. So let's get started and just talk about a few of them. There, there are so many different ways you can use Excel it's impossible to list them all but we'll talk about a few that are, are fairly common within the um, mechanical design and engineering space. So one of them is, uh, is ab absolutely calculations and equations. So let's say that, um, I don't know, for example, we, we had uh, something simple um, to create uh, an equation in Excel. You start with the equals sign and then you say, I don't know, equals five plus nine. So pretty simple, right? Press return or enter and 14 okay so that's great so the, the the real value of excel because you could just do that with any old calculator right the real value of excel uh, or or one of the real values in excel is being able to define variables and then change those variables so instead of just saying uh, equals 5 plus 9 let's say that i i wanted to define a variable right so let's say I don't know, I, I want to sum the ages of everyone in my family. So I'd say me, wife, child one, child two. This is how we name children in our family. We just call them child one and child two. All right, so we've got, uh, I'm 39, we'll say 35, and we'll say 12, and we'll say four. Sure, so we've got all these, these ages now, and we want to sum those ages. Why? I don't know, because this is a instructional video and that's what I thought of. So we're going to sum those ages, right? So one way I could do this is say equals 39 plus 35 plus 12 plus 4 and I hit enter and I have 90. Okay, great. Sum of our ages is 90. But then, wait, what if I say, oh shoot, I was wrong. Child 1 is not 12 years old. Child 1 is 10 years old and I changed that to 10 and I hit enter. Oh, but 90 doesn't update because I have not used the variables in the equation. I've just typed in the hard numbers. And this is where Excel gets really powerful. So instead of saying equals these discrete numbers, I'm going to say equals this plus this plus this plus this. Oops, this. And now I hit enter. Now we have 88, right? So that's the new value, the new sum of this after I changed child 1 to 10. So now if I come in and say, wait a minute, my, my wife is not 35 years old. She is 36 years old. And I change that and I hit enter. Boom. Our total changes to 89. Now this, of course, is a very simple example, but you can see how powerful it is. You know, what if we had a data set of 100 different numbers and we wanted to sum those numbers or not even just sum them. We were just... Uh, crunching the numbers somehow, maybe we were, there's a more sophisticated algorithm or equation, and uh, you certainly would not want to update that algorithm or equation every time one of your numbers changed. So by using variables and setting those variables in your equation, you don't have to change the, the equation, you can just change the variables and they'll be, you know, whatever they're going to be. And your, your, your total, the result of your equation will be uh, updated automatically. So th this was a pretty simple one. Um, actually, let's. Uh, what I did here was go through and individually click on all of these four values. But let's say that there were 2,000 values there. I'm not going to go through and individually click on 2,000 values. That would take forever. And Excel has a really great function in here. This is something that we very commonly use. So I'll go go over it here. I'm going to say equals sum open parentheses and you see when I hit my open parentheses it, it kind of gives me a prompt for what you know, what Excel is expecting okay so Excel is expecting number one and then number two and then etc 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 so instead of having to individually click on 39 and then 38 and then 10 and then 6 what I can do is just click and hold and then drag and then let go of the click 
and then close it with my close parentheses and hit enter. And now we have 93. So again, for four entries, it doesn't make that much difference in terms of time that you might save. But imagine if I had 2,000 entries here, instead of going through and clicking all those individual entries, I could just click and hold and drag and then unclick and, and there I go. I've selected everything. All right, so that's a very simple example of how Excel can be used to calculate something. Now, um, the, we can do all, all kinds of calculations in Excel. We don't just have to add things. We can, we can actually do some trigonometry. Um, we can use all the, the basic arithmetic, you know, plus, minus, divide, multiply. Uh, we can use exponents, you know, so what if I wanted to, uh, what if I wanted to add all of these values, but then square the value for child one and then take the square root of everything. So let's, let's see what that looks like. So, uh, we've got, uh, equals sum of all of these, but I want to sum the square root of child number one. So maybe what I'll do is say, uh, or I'm sorry, I want to sum the square of child one. So we're going to delete that and say equals uh, this and then squared. So we've got the little carrot hat thing, whatever that's called. That's squared. Uh, and if we just hit enter now, okay, 100. That's, that's what child one squared is. But now we want to sum all the other ones. So we're going to sum, open parentheses, we're going to sum uh, these two numbers and this number and then I'm gonna do let's see another comma and and now I've got uh, this uh, c6 squared right c column c row 6 squared that's my child one that's what I want okay so I, now I'm summing all the ages plus the square of child one and that's 183 and now finally what I said was I wanted to take the square root of all of that so we start typing in S Q R and as you type these letters in you'll get a little prompt and square root that's what I want so square root um, square root and then I have to do open parentheses and then at the very end close parentheses and you'll see when I close this parentheses over here you know with all these parentheses it can get uh, confusing as to you know what parentheses should go where and so when I add this last parentheses over here, you'll see that this one right here, the corresponding parentheses, it actually turns bold just for a second. So here we go. There you go. I hope you saw it. We'll try once more. So just for a second, it'll be bold. There it is. And that just gives you a little visual indication of, um, you know, what, what that, what parentheses is associated with, with what parentheses. All right. So now we've got square root of the sum of all this stuff, including the uh, uh, the, the square of, of child one, we hit enter and boom, 13.53. That is our answer. Um, all right. So that is a quick example of how Excel can be used, uh, to calculate various things, right? And there are much more sophisticated algorithms and equations that you could use. And there's plenty of information on how to, uh, enter those equations online. So I'm not going to go through it all right here. Um, let's use a, a, another example. Let's say that uh, I wanted to count the number of parts that were accepted versus the number of parts that were rejected. So let's say that I've got part one, part two, part three. Oh, okay. Here's another cool thing. Excel is pretty smart. If it starts seeing a pattern, it can help you extend that pattern out. So if I highlight these three part one, part two, part three, Excel is thinking in the background, I, I'm guessing that the next entry is going to be part four. And so if you grab this lower cor corner here, right, you'll see that, that plus shape, left click and hold and drag down. There we go, part four, part five, part six. Excel um, automatically you know, uh, gives you the, the correct next step. So whenever there is a clear pattern being created, Excel will identify that pattern. And then you can just click and drag to uh, automatically extend that instead of having to type everything all the way in. All right. So now in our columns, well, let's say uh, accepted and rejected. Now, again, there aren't too many parts here. There are 18, but let's say we had, you know, 200 parts or something like that. We wouldn't want to go through and, and, and count all these. So what uh, what we can do here is say, let's say um, I'm going to put a, a one in there if it's accepted and a zero if it's rejected. So one, 
zero, and then we'll just kind of randomly assign things here. One, zero, one, zero, zero, one. All right, I'm getting tired of doing that, so I'm just gonna copy all this and then paste it a few times. There we go. And uh, by the way, you can do, you know, various formatting here. So maybe I wanna make this look a little nicer, put a little underline down there and then select all this and make it all bold. And maybe I want these to be centered so I can center it. So lots of formatting options here. All right, so now down here, let's say, I wanna know how many parts have we accepted and then how many have we rejected? Now I could go through and count one, two, three, four, five, but that takes a long time, especially if there are a lot of parts. So another uh, really useful equation is the, let's see, I think it's count if. So we're gonna say count if, open parentheses, and then it asks us for a range. So we're gonna uh, highlight this range here, and then it says, what is the criteria? And I'm gonna say count if there is a one, and then close my parentheses and hit enter, and there we go. 12. There are 12 entries here that have the number one. And we've already defined just in our own minds that the number one means it's been accepted. Uh, or, or maybe number one defines, you know, the, 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 uh, a yes, we'll say. And in fact, we could probably just put yes. Yeah. I probably could have just typed yes in there, but I don't know. One is quicker, I guess. Uh, and then we can, we can actually just copy this, control C, and then in this column, control V, and it will take a look at the, this, this row now. Uh, another way I could have done that is just to select this cell, and then when I hover over the bottom right, I could click and drag, and now it's, it's counting this, uh, this column as well. So now I know I have six rejected and 12 that were accepted, and if I add six to 12, that's 18. And sure enough, there are 18 parts. So I know that everything is accounted for. So uh, another quick example there, but you could see how this could be applied to uh, a, a much larger data set. And, and, and also, you know, let's say, oh, I, I made a mistake. Actually, part two actually was rejected. So I update that. And you can see that these values dynamically update as well. Okay, uh, another um, uh, another situation which you could use Excel is to record test data and then create graphs. So in this uh, in this scenario here, I had a, an end cap that was being placed onto uh, a shaft, and I wanted to measure the the force that was required to push that end cap onto the shaft, and I wanted to see how that force changed over time. So we've got trial ID here, and this is down to uh, 350 trials, and then every so often I took a force reading. I said how much force, I used a force gauge to measure how much force was required to push that end cap over a shaft. And uh, let's see, end cap two, uh, we can just delete that. So the installation force is in column B and the trial ID is in column A. And uh, I, I did this exercise. I took force measurements at you know did various uh, intervals, and then I came and I graphed that force. So uh, this chart here references these two columns, column A and column B, and you can see that uh, the x-axis down here is the trial number or trial ID going from zero out to 350 trials. And then the y-axis is our installation force, or how much force required to push that end cap onto the shaft. Now, as we see in the very beginning, the first few trials, that force was up around 14 to 16 pounds, maybe even a little bit higher than that. And as we continued with the trials, that force uh, was reduced over time. And, and so I can very clearly see that, that trend with this visual graph here. You know, down at trial 350, the force was only about four pounds. And that was really important for me to know because, uh, in this particular application, users would be putting these, these end caps on and taking them off many times. And we wanted to understand, well, is it, is it going to retain the, you know, the force required to install these caps? We didn't want it to get, uh, too easy too quickly. So uh, by graphing this data, we're able to see, okay, well now after 350 um, uh, cycles, we're going to be down around four pounds. And, you know, maybe that's okay, maybe that's not, but at any rate, we can see it now. We can see it very visually. All right. And the last example I'm going to show uh, 
is uh, uh, in creating a bill of materials or a bomb. So we have this simple template right here. We've got an ID. This is just an ID that, you know, you can be anything, whatever you want it to be. Maybe there is a part number that, that you, oh, actually we have a part number column, never mind. So you could have, this is an example, right? We, you don't need to follow this format for a bill of materials, but this is just an example that, that I put together. So you could have your, your part number and your description, your quantity and your cost, and then the, the, the quantity cost. You could put your vendor in here. Let's just fill out a couple of rows. Let's say this was, I don't know, part one, two, three, four, five. And it was a shaft, and we were ordering three of them. And the cost for each one is, um, I don't know, $10.25. And then you see I have an equation here that multiplies the quantity across the cost. If I double click, you'll see they're referencing those two fields, those two cells. And then my vendor, my vendor, uh, maybe it's NASA. I'm, I'm buying shafts from NASA. The ETA expected time of arrival is, uh, I don't know, it's uh, two weeks. Let's say two weeks. Revision, it's a revision A. And order placed on, uh, I don't know, uh, January 1st, 2001, and received uh, September 1st. 2018 NASA takes a long time to make those shafts and have I done a fit check on it yes I've done a fit check it's all done comments the shafts took a long time to whoops time to arrive but were beautiful <laughs> all right and and you know maybe there are a few of these columns and they they're all shafts or I don't know, oh look at this Excel has identified a pattern so we've got different part numbers uh, maybe this shaft two and shaft three whatever it is and these these are eight dollars and three dollars and twenty one dollars and anyway you can see how these get added up and then we have a nice sum at the bottom this is really helpful when you're putting together um, some some estimating or some costing for building a new assembly and you can organize all of your parts like this with the costs you can track what's been quoted what's not been quoted and then once you start receiving parts you can come and you know you, your order is placed your your parts are received you've done a fit check these columns could be whatever whatever you want you know but this is just an example of how excel can be used to uh cleanly organize things and also do some uh some some of the uh, calculating legwork for you. Um, anyway, there are a million and one different ways that engineers and designers can use Excel. It's a wonderful program and um, you basically need to learn how to use it. It's not, it's not, um, it's mandatory. If you're going to be designing, you need to know how to use Excel. You might not use it every day. In fact, you probably won't use it every day, but you'll use it often enough and it's powerful enough that you really need to know how to use Excel. If you found this content helpful, consider enrolling in our signature program at mypipelineacademy.com. Whether you're an individual interested in beginning a new career as a mechanical designer or a company interested in training your new engineering hires, our signature program helps students develop the practical skills they need to be productive mechanical design engineers. Seating is limited. We hope to see you there soon.